Well, time for a look now at fixed income markets. Jonathan Sheridan joining us now live from Fixed Securities in Sydney. John, of course, we're talking all about the RBA meeting today. How are bond markets pricing this in? Good morning, Ingrid. Yeah, look, I think uh, we've had the pricing in of an expected rate cut uh, either today or in the next month or so for about the last three weeks. Um, that was obviously a bit volatile last week as, as the actual certainty around cuts receded and then came back in uh, in some strength with the publishing of that article in the AFR last week but um, the market overall has been pretty flat overnight um, just uh, I guess locally awaiting the decision. Yes now in, in terms of what might change if expectations are not met we've sort of examined the move uh, higher likely in the dollar inevitably in terms of bond movements uh, how susceptible to a sort of a violence uh, move uh, are we eyeing you know realistically Jonathan this afternoon yeah look I think the market's uh, pretty heavily priced in a cut in at least uh, in the next uh, month or two and if there's no indication that that'll be forthcoming mm -hmm. if it doesn't actually come today then we could see uh, maybe a, a 10 or even 20 point um, 20 point lift in yields um, that would be a violent movement uh, I'm, I'm not sure it'd be across the curve uh, it might just be in the short end which is steepened considerably recently. What are we seeing in the local bond market, the corporate bond market as well? Because we're seeing some more hybrids expected to price. That's right, we are. Uh, ANZ uh, are looking to do another hybrid deal. Uh, the, the chatter in the market is it's about 850 million uh, of an expected uh, size of 750, which is pretty weak demand, to be honest. Usually these things are oversubscribed by uh, two to three times, and the pricing's at about 3.6% over the bank bill swap rate, which is, which is very tight. Um, for, I think it's an eight year non call period, so um, that's pretty much where the latest CBA deal that issued last year is pricing. But also, rumours that NAB will come out uh, in a week or two with a, a same price structure but for a five year deal instead of eight. So um, the ANZ deal looking expensive for mine. And NAB, meanwhile, uh, you know, do we get a sense as to what use uh, this issuance is going to go towards? Uh, anything you know, profound or just more of the same? Yeah, look, I think it's just more of the same. I mean, this is one of the issues with the with the ANZ issue, uh, no pun intended, is that it's not rolling over any previous bonds at all. Uh, it's just a, a new issue, and they're just raising general funds as part of their overall capital management. Um, and, and that always uh, is a bit of a uh, dampener on demand. So, you know, the CBA deal that, that happened last year was rolling over uh, previous Pearls 5 uh, into Pearl 7, and, and that always helps the, the order size. In other words, you know the whole Baal three shake-up. You you haven't detected it with banks specifically in their issuance uh, that that this has been motivated primarily by that. Uh, uh, do they go? Are they at pains to make that link, or it's not? It's not on the radar. I think it's key to the to the sort of softening demand. I mean, the institutions basically just don't buy these hybrids anymore. It, it's an, almost an entirely a retail issue, and um, that, that's partly because the institutions don't really uh, know how it will play out if the new non-viability clauses come into play, and the retail market just don't really seem to care. You know, they look at it and say, oh, it's ANZ at six percent. That's great. They're never going to go bust. Um, but of course, it's not as simple as that. And you know, the fixed income should be playing a defensive role in your portfolio mm -hmm. and we've seen the experience through the GFC that uh, hybrids traded pretty much like equities uh, and so it didn't really give you that defensive performance in your portfolio. So your advice to clients um, is, is what? Our advice to clients is that we've got no problem with you buying these things but just consider them as equity risk rather than fixed income risk mm -hmm. uh, and therefore you know we don't sell them anymore with anything with the non-viability clauses so we're, we're fine with actually owning them but just consider them in the appropriate risk bucket. Be loud and clear. All right Jonathan thank you so much. Great. Appreciate thank you. it.